Hey folks, I'm Chris and I'm your Commander Mechanic, uh, and we're going to do a special little brew today. Kamigawa Neon Dynasty isn't even out yet, but here I am live on Twitch, twitch.tv slash Commander Mechanic, and Chat and I are going to build a deck around probably one of the weirdest cards in the set, so far at least, and that is the Reality Chip, all right? So we, what we're gonna do is we're going to, uh, we're gonna edit uh, wherever it is. Uh, where's our change commander? Oh God, I keep forgetting where this is. Not bulk edit. Uh, more change commander. Hey, there we go. I'm gonna cut that out for YouTube. <laughs> and we're gonna put the reality chip. the reality chip as our commander. And we're gonna be brewing a mono blue top storm deck, okay? Um, so the reality chip is technically a creature, even though it is a legendary artifact creature equipment jellyfish, two mana zero four, and just lets you look at the top card of your library. However, you can pay three to reconfigure it, meaning attach it to a creature like an equipment. And as long as it's attached to a creature, you can play lands and cast spells from the top of your library. I say that this is uh, really interesting because we can do a cool build with it that's similar to Elsha of the Infinite. Um, we're gonna hop over here to Scryfall and we're gonna look at Elsha of the Infinite. Elsha of the Infinite is a five mana Jeskai commander that says you can look at the top card of your library and you can cast spells from the top of your library uh, if it's a non-land, non-creature. And you can cast it as though it had flash. One of the things that you do in an Elsha of the Infinite deck is you use Sensei's Divining Top and anything that reduces the cost of your artifacts by one. And then you cast Sensei's Divining Top and activate it draw the top card of your library, put Sensei's Divining Top on top, and since it costs one less to cast, you can cast it for free, activate it to draw a card, put it back on top. You draw your entire library for free. All it requires is top, Elsha, and anything that reduces the cost of an artifact. We can do the same thing with the reality chip in mono blue now. Okay, we've gotta pay two for the reality chip, now we've got to pay three to put it on something. But from there, if we've got anything that reduces the cost of artifacts by one and Sensei's Divining Top, we draw our entire library. We essentially get a spell cast for every card in our library as well. So if we can make some mana from there, we can cast a storm spell with a storm count of like 90. Right? It's pretty easy. Uh, it's been done before, but... Mono blue is something else. So we're going to add in our core pieces here. Reality chip, Sensei's Divining Top. And we can include redundancy for the reality chip by including things like Future Sight. Okay. I play with the top card of your library revealed. You may uh, play the top card of your library. You may cast the top card of your library. Great. Uh, and Mages of the Future, which is a creature that does the same thing. Play with the top card of your library revealed, you may play lands and cast spells from the top of your library, okay? So if our commander gets removed or stolen, whatever it might be, we've got some redundancy in Future Sight uh, and Mages of the Future. There are a few other things that we can do. Uh, I think it might be, uh, pro what is it? Uh, there's a field for it. Uh, Mystic Forge is another one. There's also something field. Uh, so Mystic Forge, thank you Muffins, Mystic Forge is the artifact version of this. Four mana, you may look at the top card of your library, you may cast the top card of your library if it's an artifact card or a colorless non-land card. And then you can pay, uh, you can tap, pay one life to exile the top card of your library, uh, just so you don't get in like a chunk of lands or whatever. Uh, then there's uh, Precognition Field, that's the one. Precognition Field. And I think that that one is just spells. 
You may cast the top card of your library if it's an instant or sorcery spell. Okay, so it doesn't work in this instance, but it does let you look at the top card of your library only lets you play instants and sorceries. Disappointing. Okay, so here's a, here's the core of our loop. There's no redundancy for Sensei's Divining Top in this, but there's redundancy for our Commander, the Reality Chip. We do have access to that part of the combo anytime we want. So the other part of this is that we need something that reduces the cost of artifacts by one. The cost of any spell by one works as well. So we can put Ethereum Sculptor, and I don't mean the crypto Ethereum, but we can put Ethereum Sculptor, a two mana one, two. Artifact spells you cast cost one less. So there's our three pieces. If we've got the reality chip equipped to an Ethereum Sculptor and a Sensei's Divining Top out, we've drawn our library, right? We get a spell cast for every card in our library. We have our entire library in our hand. Easy as that. There's redundancy for Ethereum Sculptor. Quite a bit of redundancy for Ethereum Sculptor. There's Foundry Inspector. Inspector. So Foundry Inspector is a three mana artifact creature. Three, two artifact spells you cast cost one less to cast, right? Easy as that. Uh, there's also Joyra's Familiar. Joyra's Familiar is a four mana 2-2 two, two flying version of this. Historic spells you cast cost one less. That includes artifacts, legends, and sagas. They're all historic. But you can see how there's a few redundant pieces. There's non-creature pieces here too, such as Helm of uh, uh, Helm of Awakening. Helm of Awakening. Uh, all spells cost everybody one generic mana less to play. And since Sensei's Divining Top only costs one generic mana, it's free. Okay, This might seem familiar. There are a lot of pieces in this that are also in Joyra Weatherlight Captain, like there are in Elsha of the Infinite. Okay, So what we, we might want to do when building this is take some inspiration from the blue parts of those decks so that we can build in some core pieces. I like doing this when I know a deck or a commander concept is similar to other deck or commander concepts, but doesn't overlap entirely. Imagine a Venn diagram where Elsha of the Infinite is over here with the white part not overlapping with the red blue part of Joyra Weatherlight Captain and the reality chip here only overlapping with the blue parts of Elsha and Joyra. What I like to do here is maybe go into everybody's favorite EDH rack and pull out some of those core blue pieces to include and fill out a deck like this. See if there's anything else that we can run that helps our loop a little bit more, okay? And especially when I'm looking at a core loop and I'm looking for as much redundancy as possible. When you're building a combo deck, you really wanna build in as much redundancy as possible to your build so that you can get A, B, and C, but you got four or five options for each of A, B, and C. The only one that doesn't have redundancy in this loop in particular is Sensei's Divining Top because it is the only thing that does this, okay? So it's important. Also why it's back up to $70 because it sees playing Legacy, sees playing Commander, and it's a fantastic combo piece like this. I'm hoping that we see a secret layer coming up soon that has this reprinted. I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't be surprised to see that announced uh, once we get the full set reveal, all right? Uh, or see it on the list, maybe. I know the list doesn't do anything for prices, but hey, it's still nice to pull like a $70 lotto ticket uh, out of your packs once in a while, all right? So I'm gonna pop over to EDH Rec and I'm gonna take a look at Elsha and I'm gonna take a look at Joyra. And we're gonna take a look to see uh, if there's anything blue wise and redundancy wise that we want to pull out of here. We don't want to go full CEDH on this. So we aren't going to take a look at like all of the best pieces, but what we are going to want to do is look at like some ways to get these into our hands. So for instance, before I even continue looking here, I want to put Trinket Mage in. Trinket Mage, three mana, two, two, enters the battlefield. You get to tutor up your Sensei's Divining Top. 
Because it is the piece that has no redundancy, we're going to want to include the majority of our tutors that go get the piece that don't include this redundancy. So we're going to want like a were of invention. So were of invention. Okay, were of invention is the improvise instant speed tutor. Improvise means you can tap your artifacts to cast it. Uh, you can go look for an artifact with mana value one uh, or X in this case, uh, and put it on the battlefield, All right? Easy enough, easy peasy. Uh, reshape is the other one. Uh, reshape uh, makes you sacrifice an artifact, but does the same thing. So in this case, we play, pay three, sacrifice an artifact, go get it. Uh, and fabricate, absolutely. Muffin fabricate is our good old three mana tutor. Three mana, search your library for an artifact, reveal it, put it in your hand. Okay, great ways to go get the one piece that we don't have redundancy for. Okay, absolutely perfect. So let's hop back over to our Elsha EDH rec page, take a look at what else we'd want to include. Do we want to include something like Ristic Study? Maybe. Lately, I've been advocating not playing Ristic Study in decks. If you've read my articles over on Commander's Herald, uh, which you can find in my link tree, my li link to my articles, um, I, I've been advocating not playing Ristic Study because it does things to a game that nobody likes. And I'm all about creating a play experience for yourself and others. And while Ristic Study might be good for you, having to ask everybody, do you pay the one? Do you pay the one? Do, the, do you pay the one? Makes you a bit of an ass, right? Let's make sure that we're cultivating a, a better play experience, right? So Ristic Study, do we want it in? Maybe, depends on what kind of game you want. Same with Cyclonic Rift. Do we want Cyclonic Rift in? Maybe, depends on what kind of game you want. You see these salt score indicators? That's a, a good indication if you're including these in here, maybe you're making the game unfun for others. Okay, so think twice. Uh, so here we go. So here, here, right here, Ethereum Sculptor, Foundry Inspector, two of the cards that we were, we've we already included in here. Fantastic. Uh, let's see what other creatures we have in here. Trinket Mage, already included. Joyer's Familiar, already included. Fantastic. Way ahead of the game. All right. Um, anything else that reduces the cost of artifacts in blue or colorless so here's one in red blue we've got the new one out of kamigawa neon dynasty the goblin with flying that reduces artifacts as well uh here's artificer's assistant which scries us whenever we do our loop but if we're drawing our library what does that matter right yeah we might want to include win cons like laboratory maniac right uh I don't know if I'd go with Thassa's Oracle, even though it works in this deck, or Jace, a Wielder of Mysteries, works in this deck. A lot of people say, how do you win? Well, I draw my library and I play Thassa's Oracle. They're going to say like, okay, I I'm going to look for another game. Or, you know, you're, you're playing a game that I don't want to play. Be cognizant of what people want out of a game. Don't be a sociopath. All right. So we might include those as our win cons for drawing our library. Who knows? Uh, maybe we include like a uh, an omniscience package in here and we draw our library and we drop an omniscience. Who knows? Okay. Uh, but uh, apart from that, I think creature wise, uh, that's what we're including. And then we've got like our nuts and bolts in here. Muffins, you say Urza's Saga. Uh, Urza's Saga, uh, definitely a good card and definitely another tutor, okay? So Urza Saga is the land out of Modern Horizons 2, $55, right? Ouch, uh, but it is a saga. Sagas are hot right now, so keep that in mind. But as soon as it enters the battlefield, it gains tap, add colorless. Uh, the second stage, you can tap it to make a construct. And then on the third stage, you reveal your library for an artifact that costs zero or one and put it onto the battlefield. Yes, it tutors Sensei's Divining Top directly to play. It does what we want. It goes in the deck. Sure, it costs a boatload, right? It's a you know fifty-five dollar card, but it does what we want for this deck. And this deck is just hypothetical right now. We got fifteen cards, fourteen cards in the deck, and it costs one hundred fifty dollars already. 
Magic is, is expensive, y'all. All right, so creature-wise, uh, yeah, you know what? Uh, I, I am feeling like the lab man angle on this. Lab man, fast as Oracle, just wielder of mysteries. Uh, lab man. Fast as Oracle. And Jace Wielder. Uh, I before E, except after me. Uh, Jace Wielder and Mysteries. All right, all of those are our win cons for drawing our entire library. What we do is with any of these out, uh, we just continue the Sensei's Divining Top loop until we've got nothing left in our library and we draw from an empty library and we win. Or in the case of Thassa's Oracle, we draw until there's nothing left in our library, we pay two mana, Thassa's Oracle wins. At that point, we'll have our entire decks in our hand too. So we'll have a boatload of counter magic or uh, any kind of interaction to be able to stop people from stopping us. Right? Uh, so not bad, not bad. Uh, now we, we want card draw in here as well. And we're going to want like the, the staples. We're going to want like the, the ops and the ponders and the preordains and the brainstorms, <laughs> not ponder preordain, ponder and preordain and brainstorm. Brainstorm is great uh, because we can cast off the top of our library. So we can potentially brainstorm and put something back on top that we can cast off the top anyway so that we aren't losing that card advantage. Okay, uh, let's see. Uh, so ponder, preordain, brainstorm, opt, the old standbys of card draw. Uh, let's see, what else do we want in here? Uh, we've got our spell seekers. Um, so here's our interaction. Narset's Reversal, I think, is excellent interaction as well as Swan Song. I think these are two of the fairest counter spells in the format, uh, and I love having them in any blue deck. I'd put them in this one in a heartbeat. Uh, negate as well. I think Negate is like baseline. All right. Uh, Aetherflux is a win con. Yeah, we'll, we'll look to include that too. Aetherflux does need to be out before you start the loop in order to win off of that, but you're getting ahead of me here. Um, so negate, I think, is baseline minimum what you want out of a counter spell in Commander. Fierce Guardianship, uh, Pact of Negation, Force of Will, all of those, I think, are overkill in a lot of instances, uh, unless you're expecting a counter magic heavy table, in which case you know what your vibe is. All right, so I'm going to add in Swan Song, and I'm going to add in Narset's Reversal, and I'm going to add in Negate. Three pieces of counter magic, quick and easy, okay? I might add in Arcane Denial. I think Arcane Denial is another fair piece of counter magic. Doesn't give people the feel bads. We are in mono blue, so just plain old counter spell. Perfectly cromulent in here too. And just plain old counter spell as well is like a $2.50 card. Let's switch printings. Here, $2. Yeah, regular old counter spell, y'all. Two bucks. Regular old counterspell. Magic is getting too damn expensive. Rent is too damn high. All right. Uh, so muffins, as you're saying in chat, Aetherflux. Aetherflux Reservoir is Fishbowl. And Fishbowl goes pew pew. Four mana artifact. Whenever you cast a spell, gain one life for each spell you've cast this turn. Pay 50 life. Aetherflux Reservoir deals 50 damage to target creature or player. We are going to potentially be casting 80 instances or more of our Sensei's Divining Top, okay? If we draw into Aetherflux Reservoir, cast Aetherflux Reservoir, then top again, it sees every other spell cast. It, it doesn't have to be in play for that. It just keeps note of how many spells you've cast this turn. So if we've cast it 40 times, then cast Reservoir, then cast uh, our top again and do our loop again, we gain 41 life or 40 life, then 41 life, then 42 life every cast. And very quickly, we're able to pay 50 life and just laser each opponent. Just be careful. 
I, I've been got trying to laser people by deflecting palms or uh, or uh, deflecting SWATs as well. Um, it, it's been it's been a weird time in Magic, y'all. <laughs> uh, but I, I love it. It's great. A lot of fun. Fantastic for what we're trying to do. Okay. So let's see. Let's uh, take a look at the rest of this. Uh, we don't necessarily want Factor Fiction uh, as card draw because if we pull like two combo pieces, our opponents just separate them into different piles. We obviously only take the one that has Sensei's Divining Top in it. So, you know, Factor Fiction ends up being like a four and one if we reveal top. Okay. Uh, so maybe not great. I think Brain Freeze works as another win con in this. Uh, and I'd like to include it uh, because what happens is brain freeze. Uh, brain freeze acts as another wing con because if we cast uh, Sensei's Divining Top 80 times and then brain freeze, we get 81 instances of mill three cards. That's enough to get everybody. That's a that's enough to just wreck the table, right? You point 20 at each person. Uh, you're milling 60 cards from all of them. It's real good. Okay. Uh, point 30 at everybody. Right? Entire library is gone. Okay. Uh, so we got our words. Uh, let's see. Miscast. Uh, there's a new artifact, Dig Through Time. There is a new artifact, Dig Through Time. I don't think it's been added to, uh, to uh, Moxfield just yet or Scryfall yet, but it's called Reality Heist. So let's see, Reality Heist. Oh, it has been added, perfect. So let's take a look at this bad boy. Reality Heist, seven mana, instant. It's got affinity, meaning it costs one less for each artifact you control. It's affinity without being infin affinity. But look at the top seven cards of your library. You may reveal up to two artifact cards from among them and put them into your hand. Put the rest on the bottom of your library. So this is dig seven deep for your top, grab like your your top your ethereum sculptor uh your foundry inspector like you can grab all of your combo pieces with this so it's perfect right reality heist love it great call muffins all right so uh let's head back to elsha we'll see what's in here um so i like uh i like some removal to be included in the deck as well and i like reality shift and pongify and rapid hybridization as well as suspend so let's add that package as our single target removal. Reality shift, Pongify, rapid hybridization, uh, and suspend. These are like one and two mana removal spells, single target that destroy a creature or suspend a creature or exile a creature. I think for blue, that's baseline. In this, we want some bounce to get rid of non-creature stuff too. You know, there's a chain of vapor that we can include as well. I think that's a little bit higher on the power scale than what we want. It's a little try hardy for chain of vapor, but we might include some other good stuff too. Uh, Resculpt is another good one to exile an artifact or creature, but we've already got four instances of it. Uh, I like leadership vacuum. Uh, target player returns each commander they control from the battlefield to the command zone and it draws you a card of cantrips uh, i think more people should be playing leadership vacuum especially in the age of partners uh, so i'm going to throw it in here because it's uh it's fun all right uh let's see so from our sorcery side we've got our fabricates i think windfall is a must-have for card draw Discard a hand that contains none of our combo pieces. Redraw. Uh, Serum Visions, that I think, is like on the lower end of what we want our card draw to be. Uh, but good nonetheless. Uh, and there is this cool piece of tech in See the Truth. See the Truth was an all-star in my uh, Vadrak uh, deck that lets you cast stuff out of the yard whenever you mutate. 
because see the truth is a three mana sorcery that says look at the top three cards of your library put one of those cards into your hand and the rest on the bottom of your library in any order if this spell was cast from anywhere other than your hand put each of those cards into your hand instead so in a deck where we're casting stuff off the top of our library this is two mana draw three cards love it love it see the truth and we've got so many ways to cast off the top of our library We'd be stupid not to include it. We've got a reshape, right? Uh, solve the equation could potentially go get us another tutor. I don't like tutoring for tutors, but I do like solve the equation. It was my blue card of the year last year and it's still criminally underplayed. Okay. Merchant scroll again. Uh, treasure cruise, dig through time. We could potentially include those. I'm all for them. I really like echo of aeons. Uh, just in general, but because it rebuys your graveyard. If Sensei's Dividing Top gets milled or removed, you want a way to shuffle it back in, and Echo of Aeons is a great way to do it. Even though you should totally uh, like scratch the art off of it, because Therese Nelson is a turf, and we don't stand turfs here. All right. Uh, so let's see, uh, return target permanent to its owner's hand. I like Temporal Fisher as a potential win con, or at least that nobody else gets to play magic win con here, but it doesn't actually win us the game, and I want people to have fun. Uh, let's see, we've got, uh, Mass Diminish as a potential, uh, yeah, let's go Mass Diminish as a potential, uh, removal board wipe here. So Mass Diminish is two mana until your next turn. Creatures target player controls have base power and toughness 1-1, one, one, and you flash it back for 4. Uh, it, it, you can't do it in response to anything. It is a sorcery, uh, but it is a, a good way to ensure that uh, if somebody's running something like a uh, Spirit of the Labyrinth, Uh, Spirit of the Labyrinth, each player can't draw... Oh, that's... Yeah, can't draw more than one card each turn. Uh, then that would shut us down. If we mass diminish and then go off with our combo, we can draw as many cards as we want. We can draw our library. It's not stopping us. Uh, same with the uh, the one that... Uh, Rule of Laws as well, or any creature that limits us to casting one spell each turn. Uh, either we remove it with one of our single target removal options, or we can just mass diminish that player so that we can go off. If there's somebody that's stopping us with a creature, we've got ways to deal with it. Okay, uh, so here's our Aetherflux Reservoir, our Helm of Awakening. Cloud Key is another one. So Cloud Key, uh, three mana artifact. As it enters the battlefield, choose artifact creatures, enchantments, instants, or sorceries. Spells you cast of the chosen type cost one less. So it's the three mana option, but Cloud Key is another cost reducer. Redundancy in a combo deck, real, real good. All right, uh, let's see. Would we include any of this? I don't think so. Mystic Forge we've got. Semblance Anvil we could potentially do as well. Semblance, An Semblance Anvil is three mana. When it enters the battlefield, you imprint something on it. And then spells you cast that share a type with the XL card cost two less. So you can put an artifact creature under this and artifacts cost two less and creatures cost two less. Might as well. Again, uh, it is redundancy. And redundancy is important in a combo deck. Uh, let's see. Cool colors. Bell, Wand of Vertebrae, Scroll of the Masters, Elixir of Immortality. So Elixir of Immortality is another way to rebuy your graveyard. I like it, especially because we only have, uh, one Sensei's Divining Top. So Elixir of Immortality goes in. Plus, you know, we can cast it off the top of our library. It's one mana. Real good. Moon Silver Key is another good one. Uh, because Moon Silver Key can buy us our mana pieces. Moon Silver Key uh, recently printed in uh, in Midnight Hunt, two mana artifact, one task, sacrifice it. Search your library for an artifact card with a mana ability. This gets Soul Ring. This gets Talismans. Whatever it might be. Let's add in Soul Ring right now as well. So let's get Soul Ring. Let's add in Arcane Signet. Right, let's add in uh, Everflowing, Everflowing Chalice, uh, Felwer Stone, 
perfect. All of the good rocks in here too, uh, because mana rocks rock. Okay, uh, let's see what else would we include in a build like this. Uh, we wouldn't include any of that. We don't have any particularly necessary lands to expedition map. Uh, let's see. Would we want to include some pillow fort aspects like a propaganda? Potentially, right? Would we want to include something like a shark typhoon or uh, metallurgic summonings? So every time we cast the top, uh, we make like a 1-1 one, one as well. We could do that. We could do that. Sai Master Thopterist along the same lines. Yeah, every time we cast the loop, we end up with an army. And what we can do is we can loop until we're down to like one or two cards in our library. And we just have like 80 creatures in play with all of the uh, all of our interaction in hand. So let's uh, let's add in Sai Master Thopterist. And let's add in Metallurgic. Metallurgic Summonings as well. So Metallurgic Summonings, five mana, whenever you cast an, oh, it's just instant or sorcery. Uh, so it's gonna have to be Shark Typhoon. Because Shark Typhoon is non-creature. Shark Typhoon is whenever you cast a non-creature spell, create a one, one or an XX uh, blue, in, uh, blue shark creature token with flying. So in this case, every time we loop it, this is making us a 1-1 one, one flyer if we're looping with Sensei's Divining Top. Okay, super cool. Love it as a potential win con, backup win con. Love it. Uh, the other thing that we can do is Mirrodin Besieged as well. Uh, Mirrodin Besieged is an enchantment and we can choose either Mirin or Phyrexian. Phyrexian is very topical right now. Uh, if we choose Mirin, whenever you cast an artifact spell, we create a 1-1 one, one Mirror another way to get board presence, or we can choose Phyrexian at the beginning of your end step, draw a card, then discard a card, then if uh, there are 15 or more artifact cards in your graveyard, target opponent loses the game. What we can do is if we loop and we don't lose, loop infinitely, we can discard our hand so that the end of every turn, we can start just losing people the game. Left, right, and center. The end of my turn, you lose the game. Next turn comes around, you lose the game. Next turn comes around, you lose the game. I like it in either mode in this case. Oh, does Cloud, Cloud Key, oh, Cloudstone Curio. Yeah, Cloudstone Curio does say non-artifact for exactly that reason, Muffins. Uh, there have been so many people that have been like, hey, you included uh, Cloudstone Curio, but you didn't mention this artifact creature. Sorry, you can go colorless creatures, no artifact creatures. Altar of the Brood, I love. I, I include it in anything that loops uh, like this as well. It is a one mana artifact, but whenever another permanent enters the battlefield under your control, each opponent puts the top card of their library into their graveyard. So in this case, if we loop 80 cards, we're milling 80 cards from everybody. Uh, every time that Sensei's Divining Top hits, we mill, and we can mill everybody out, leave a couple of cards in our library, pass the turn to them, they draw from an empty library. What do you know? We win the game. Right. I think it's another great one. Awesome recommendation. All right. Uh, so let's see. Uh, we were through that. So into our utility lands. Uh, Academy Ruins is a must-have because it rebuys Sensei's Divining Top. Okay. Academy Ruins rebuys Sensei's Divining Top. So good. Uh, what else would we include in here? We included Urza Saga, fantastic. Inventor's Fair, I think, uh, is, or is like I like to call it, Inventor's Unfair. Uh, it's a perfectly fine card. Having to pay that much mana for the tutor on it, having to pay four and sacrifice it, uh, is quite a lot. But at that point, we have everything except our, sen our Sensei's Divining Top in play. Activate it at your, your opponent's turn, on your opponent's turn. Untap with your combo, ready to go. Uh, and it incidentally gains us some life if we have three or more artifacts in our upkeep. Okay, uh, Buried Ruin is another way to rebuy uh, our Sensei's Divining Top. Love it. And since we're in mono blue, we can just include the stuff that just rebuys our artifacts and then the rest of it is islands. We can just fill the rest of the deck with islands. Uh, so let's see, we got Soul Ring, Arcane Signet, Felwer Stone. Uh, we can put Mind Stone in. I didn't put Mind Stone in. 
Mindstone rebuys itself. Uh, rebuys your draw, rather. Love it. Uh, Chrome Mox, if we wanted to go hard, I think Chrome Mox is the fairest of the fast mana or the zero mana pieces because it does set you back a card. Your mileage may vary, though. It is up to $80 again. Like, it's jumped $40 in the past, like, two months. Um, yeah. Buyer beware. We'll say that. Uh, I think Thought Vessel is a good one to have, too. I, I don't normally include stuff that uh, gives you no maximum hand size, especially Reliquary Tower. But Thought Vessel being a mana rock, uh, we are aiming to draw our entire library. And if we can't win that turn, we can still draw and hang on to everything, which would be a big boon in this deck. Would I go as far as to include Reliquary Tower in this? I don't think so. Would I recommend Mox Amber in this deck? We have a two mana commander. I think Mox Amber is, again, one of the fairest pieces of mana acceleration, free mana acceleration, uh, mana positive rocks in this instance, because we can cast our Jellyfish on two, then Mox Amber and ramp ahead. So I'm going to put Mox Amber in uh, because it is, again, fair. All right, uh, let's see, let's see, let's see. Other than that, and then we're into our lands, right? And again, in our case, we're just going to want to put in, like, let's say, uh, we'll get us up to 35 lands. Uh, so let's add more, and we're going to add 30 more. So we're going to be at 35 lands. That gives us still 13 spots in our main deck here. We haven't even taken a look at Joyra yet. So I'm going to hop over to... Joyra, Weatherlight Captain, and we're going to see if there's anything over here that would further our game plan as well. Okay. Uh, would we want to replace one of our islands with Seed of the Synod? Maybe. Maybe. There are corner cases where we can get blown out for, uh, like, a Vandal Blast, for instance. I Again, I think that that's a corner case. I think Seed of the Synod would be fine. You know what, Muffins, you agree with me? Consider it in. Seed of the Synod. We'll remove an island. Perfect. All right. Uh, what else would we include? Uh, yeah, exactly, exactly. Same brain cell, Muffins. Same brain cell. Uh, so let's see, what else would we include? Um, so we don't exactly want to do the artifact storm that Joyra does. So paradoxical outcome, Hercules recall, not exactly what we want, rebuild, those kind of things. Uh, Riddlesmith would get us a little bit deeper into our library because uh, whenever that top comes into play, we can draw and discard, we can loot again. It's a potential in here. We have so many artifacts, 16 artifacts in here, not counting our artifact creatures as well. I think Riddlesmith is great. All right, I, I think uh, it digs us a little bit deeper, gets us some card selection. Uh, Ethereum Sculptor, Thopter Foundry, right? Nothing that we haven't seen here before. Oh, for a Burgi in this deck. Um, let's see, we could potentially go Ornithopter of Paradise as a uh, mana rock on a body. Not 100% on it. You know, I love my clones, so Phyrexian Metamorph is up in the air. Vidalkin Archmage, yeah, that's another draw card on Artifact Cast. Uh, so we can include it. Uh, do keep in mind uh, that our commander is an Artifact Creature. So if Vidalkin Archmage is out and the reality chip isn't, it essentially turns our commander into a cantrip here, which is still pretty decent. Now, the other thing is that the reality chip does need to be equipped to a creature in order to give us that cast from the top of our library ability. Uh, so we are going to want more creatures in here. We're going to need to attach it to something. So I really want to look at what kind of creatures we can put in here to ensure that we've got something to attach our jellyfish boy onto, okay? So let's take a look at some more creatures, okay? Uh, I think Padim is a great inclusion. Uh, artifacts you control have Hexproof at the beginning of your upkeep if you control the artifact with the highest converted mana value uh, or tied for the highest, draw a card. So Padim's great. All 
All right. Chief Engineer, artifact call, uh, spells call, uh, have Convoke. I think that's great too. Uh, Chief Engineer, perfect. Again, we want bodies to equip our jellyfish onto. So all of these things are great. Thought Monitor is another good one too. Uh, I, I, Muffins, I think Urza is a little bit too much for this uh, because that would just turn us into an Urza deck. Um, we, we would just be tapping all of our artifacts to spin the wheel and get free stuff. I don't think that that's what this deck wants to do. Thought Monitor, on the other hand, Affinity for Artifacts Flying. When it enters the battlefield, draw two cards. Love it. Thought Monitor, real good. Uh, the other one that we can include is Shimmer Dragon. I really like this one too. Shimmer Dragon, still super undervalued. Shimmer Dragon was printed only in the Eldraine Brawl decks. It's a six mana, five, six flyer. As long as you control four or more artifacts, Shimmer Dragon has Hexproof. Tap two untapped artifacts you control, draw a card. Real, real good, okay? We got a bunch of artifacts in here. We got a bunch of spells in here. Uh, being able to tap two of them, whether they be Thopters or whether they be some of our, uh, our uh, cost reducers that don't normally tap, uh, to draw cards, great. I, I think that it is card advantage on a body. It's a house. Let's see. Uh, do we want... Uh, are we willing to do Solemn Simulacrum? Do we want some of our artifact uh, dorks in here, like a Hedron Crawler? Uh, that's up to us. Uh, I think Solemn could probably go in. Uh, let's... Uh, Let's go with, uh, with the blue mirror, the silver mirror. Let's go silver mirror. And we'll go Ornithopter of Paradise as well. Ornithopter of Paradise too. Because we need bodies at this point. I want to get us up to at least 20 creatures in the deck so we have things to attach our, uh, our creatures onto. Um, Thieving Skydiver... Yes. Uh, so, Thieving Skydiver uh, might say opponents. So, Thieving Skydiver says Kicker X. When Thieving Skydiver enters the battlefield, if it was kicked, gain control of target artifact with mana value X or less. Okay, so we could. We could potentially uh, cast Thieving Skydiver with a kicker of two and target our own jellyfish to put it onto the Skydiver. I think that's fair. I, I like Skydiver. Skydiver was my card of the set for uh, the new Zendikar, uh, Zendikar set. So I, I like finding more spots for it. And I mean, like, we could do also do something like steal an opponent's soul ring. Still ends up being good. Okay, real good. Uh, and let's see, what else do we want in here? Uh, Shield Sphere, I was talking about that earlier. That's a bonus one for everybody out there. Um... Let's see, Stone Coil Serpent, Kaldotha Forge Master, Milliken. All right, we are we only have three spots left in the deck. We're at 18 creatures. I think that that's pretty fair. Let's take a look at our curve and see what we can include. We've got a couple seven mana spells. So we don't have any board wipes at the moment. So I want to, uh, I want to include at least two board wipes in here. And in this case, uh, I want to include some like fair board wipes so my fairest board wipes are aether spouts even though it does blow out one player you know aether spouts is uh for each attacking creature its opponent puts it on the top or bottom of their library uh it's, it, it's basically a, a big old middle finger to one player out there it's pretty okay and there's also flood of tears uh which is return all non-land permanents to their owner's hands. If you return four or more non-token permanents you control this way, you may put a permanent card from your hand onto the battlefield. So this would be a great way to like return everything to everybody's hands, drop a cost reducer, and then dump all of your cheap artifacts out again. Especially if you start dropping like your mana rocks, like a mind stone for one mana, tap it to cast another mana rock, to tap it to cast another mana rock. Uh, I think Flood of Tears is kind of what we want here. It is a sorcery, so you have to do it on your turn, but it's still real good. 
Right? Anybody else have any other fair blue board wipes they like out there? Not Cyclonic Rift. Uh, being able to just return everything at the end of somebody else's turn. There's a reason why it's got a high salt score. What's your favorite blue board wipe? For everybody watching on YouTube, let me know in the comments below what your favorite blue board wipe is as well. Not Cyclonic Rift, you trolls. And while we take this break, I just want to remind everybody, thank you to my beautiful sponsors that you can see along the bottom of the screen right now for allowing me to put this on. If you want to check any of them out from Harry Tarantula for any singles uh, that we might be talking about here today, uh, Alter Sleeves, if you're looking to cover up some art from an artist that's a dick bag, uh, go on over there. Moxfield, if you're looking for the best deck builder on the internet. And Quiver, if you're looking for sleeves and carrying cases. All right. Uh, and as always, you can check out all of my stuff in my link tree, which for you on YouTube is in the description below. All right. Fantastic. Uh, so last card in the deck. What are we looking at? Engulf the Shore. Engulf the Shore. So Engulf the Shore reads, Return to their owner's hands all creatures with toughness less than or equal to the number of islands you control. It's instant speed again, which I think is great. We're adding it to the deck because, again, we've got 30 islands in this deck. So we're going to have enough that basically... We're only going to have like one or two non-basics out at a time. <laughs> Maybe non-basically we're going to have one or two basics at a time, or non-basics out at a time. Uh, so that means that Engulf the Shore is basically going to be an instant speed board wipe. And we'll be able to reset much faster because we can play like a, an Ethereum Sculptor into our reality chip and go off like that. I love it. Videlkin Shackles. If we had extra room in the deck, if we end up making any cuts for the deck, absolutely I'll include Vidalcan Shackles. But we're at 100 cards right now and a $415 price tag on this. Let's take a look at our curve. So our curve, uh, we're at 2.7. We are under three right now, which is great because I only included 35 lands. If we were at three, I'd probably bump it up to 36 or 37. So we're looking pretty good. We got a couple of high-end spells, but we know that the cost of them can be reduced. There's the Thought Monitor, there's the uh, Dig Through Time for Artifacts, the Memory Heist or whatever it is. Uh, we got our Board Wipes at 6. I think we're looking pretty solid in terms of where that is. Uh, of course, 100% of our mana is blue. So let's run through some hands. Okay, This is what I like to do before I call a deck finished. I want to make sure I've got more keepable hands than unkeepable hands. So let's take a look. Here's our first hand, only one land in it, but we've got Serum Visions to rebuy that draw and Scry 2 to fix our draw. We've got Altar of the Brood that we can drop right away. Knowing how low to the ground our deck is, I'd probably keep this, and I might be greedy and slam Altar of the Brood on turn one. So turn two, I can Serum Visions and have a chance at drawing two more islands, the draw for turns and... Uh, then Serum Visions and Scrying. But that's me, that's greedy. No, never punished. Love it. All right. Uh, so next hand, five, five lands, Chief Engineer and Suspend. Ugh. Like this works because on, for, on turn two, we can cast the Chief Engineer. And then on turn three, we can tap him to help cast our Commander. And... Uh, keep suspend up as well if we need to i probably wouldn't keep it it's just not enough gas uh here's two lands suspend fabricate reality shift trinket mage here we have a lot of ways to go get top but none of our cost reducers in hand i'd probably pitch it uh here's our only land is urza's saga sure we could urza's, urza's saga into altar of the brood it's just a shame because if we had an island Urza Saga, Altar of the Brood, Ethereum Sculptor on turn two, if we had an island, would be fantastic. Uh, because as soon as Urza Saga ticks up, we would have our Jellyfish in play and attached to Ethereum Sculptor, and we'd be able to go off. Uh, here's another one lander, pitch it. Here's three land, a Preordain, Mages of the Future, so we can cast from the top of our library, and Psy, so we have a win con for our loop. I like this, it's a little bit risky, uh, but I like it. I'd, I'd probably keep it because I am greedy. I'm greedy as all heck. 
Our next up is Three Islands, Counterspell, Shark Typhoon. Nah, with, a, with two six mana spells in our hand and no creatures, this one I'm pitching back. So here's another one lander. 35 land, and there are a lot of one landers in here, but we do have that Serum Vision. Would I keep it? Probably not. All right, so here's four lands, including an Urza Saga. Uh, Urza Saga, we probably would slam on turn two rather than turn one. We've got a Trinket Mage to go search up our, uh, our Sensei's Divining Top. But again, we've got no creature. We could potentially make a Construct with Urza Saga to equip our Jellyfish onto so we can cast from the top of our library. I think it works. It's sloppy. It's dirty. It doesn't have our cost reducers in it. But I'd probably keep it. Two lands, or two non-basics. What did I tell you about probably only having two, having one non-basic? And here I am proven wrong. Uh, so we've got two non-basics, we've got one of our cost reducers, and we've got our redundancy for our commander. I like it. I like it. There's no creature in the opener, but we do have the future sight in case we don't draw into that creature. We just don't have any blue mana right now. So it's a rough one. Here we have that Urza Saga again. It always comes back to us. Helm of Awakening, Thought Monitor. So there's our Cost Reducer, there's our Tutor, and we've got a Riddle Smith as a creature in order to put our Jellyfish on. Keepable. Everything that we want to see. One Lander, pitch it. Four Lander, two of our Wind Cons in here with Lab Man and Jace and a Negate, pitch it. Uh, here's four five lands and a solemn we're doing nothing until turn four unless we're casting our jellyfish early pitch it two lands soul ring silver mirror chef's kiss you love to see it this is like turn two we're were of inventioning for top <laughs> turn three yeah so instant speed turn two we were of invention so turn one we play an island soul ring silver mirror turn two we play the island and pass End of turn, we were of invention, grab top, put it into play, untap, cast and equip jellyfish onto the mirror, and win the game. I think that's pretty good. <laughs> Just like we drew it up, team. All right. Uh, and then here we go. Felwerstone, Riddlesmith. Yeah. It's another keepable one. Right? Tutor, something to equip our jellyfish onto. Love it, love it. Team, I think that we've got a, a good deck here. Pretty decent mono blue, uh, mono blue top here. I like it, I like it. Uh, Nico, uh, thanks for joining us, buddy. How about Emery, Lurker of the Lock? So Emery, uh, Lurker of the Lock, uh, costs one less for each artifact card, uh, each artifact you control. Uh, when Emery enters the battlefield, put the top four cards of your library into your graveyard. Tap, choose an artifact card in your graveyard. You may cast that until end of turn. I like it as a way to get uh, top out of the bin, potentially. But it is a way that we could put top in the bin, and that leaves us very vulnerable. I I like it. I'm gonna I'm gonna include it. It's great great recommendation. What do we remove for it? Do we remove some of our like one mana draw in here? Do we remove some of our interaction? What do we remove for it? All right. I think we remove maybe one of our removal spells, our target removal spells. Reality shift being two mana as opposed to one mana puts it on a chopping block in my mind. I don't like cutting interaction if I think that I'm in a pod that is particularly interactive, but uh, I think that it works here. All right. So fam, uh, this list is up on my Moxfield profile if you want to go check it out. Uh, I'm going to have a link to it in the description below for everybody watching on YouTube right now. But let me know what you think about the reality chip and this mono blue top list. Do you think it works? We got it running here with like no fast mana to a turn three all of your library in your hand. If you included fast mana in here, you could probably win the game on turn two or three if you had your mana crypts and your uh, your uh, chrome moxes and your 
uh, your other mocks in slipping my mind right now, the Metalcraft one. Uh, but if you had all of them, you could probably win a lot sooner here too. Is it CEDH tier? I think being mono blue keeps it from being CEDH tier, but uh, it, it's still pretty pushed for a relatively casual deck. Mox Opal, thank you, Muffins. All right, uh, okay, so uh, here we have it, team. Uh, everybody watching on YouTube, once again, thank you for tuning in. Uh, check out the list below and uh, good luck and have fun. A massive shout out to all of the patrons that support the channel. I could not do this without you. In particular, a special shout out to our Lodestone Golems, Andrew M, Ben Davis, Ben Frain, Jonathan McManus, and Cameron Scott. And our premium patrons are Metalwork Colossi, Judson Bates, Matt Oakes, Matthew Chandler, Sean Carrier, Timothy Conan, and Wyatt M. Thank you, everyone.